Will you pray with me? May the words of my mouth and meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O God, our strength and our living and loving Redeemer. Amen. Emmanuel, God with us. That's something that we heard. It's something that we thought about. Something that we sang about all throughout Advent and the Christmas season. On Wednesday, we started a new season in the church here, the season of Epiphany. It starts with the the visit of the Magi to Jesus and his family. And, And the revelation that Jesus is the promised Messiah, not just for the Jews, but for the entire world, for all people. It continues today. And the first Sunday uh, after Epiphany with the baptism of our Lord. Now, in our Old Testament reading, we went all the way back to the very beginning of the Bible, to the beginning of creation. We read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was over the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Water and the Spirit. That's what we find at the beginning of all of creation. That's how it all began. Water and the Spirit. In our gospel lesson today, we we find ourselves at the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. And what do we find there? Water and the Spirit. And when he came up out of the water immediately, he saw the heavens opening and the spirit descending on him like a dove. Now, the baptism of Jesus might seem like somewhat of an insignificant event, or at least not one of the the, the major events of Jesus' life in ministry. But in fact, it's one of the few events of Jesus' life that all four gospel writers include in their account of his life. But but we'll come back to Jesus' baptism in just a little bit. So in our Old Testament lesson, we, we had the beginning of all creation, and we had water and the Spirit. In our gospel lesson, we had the beginning of Jesus' earthly ministry. And again, we had water and the Spirit. In our epistle reading from Romans chapter 6, we see the beginning of our life in Christ. And what do we find there? Water and the Spirit. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Baptism, water, and the Spirit. Now when I read Romans chapter 6, I think of Emmanuel. But a a little bit of a twist on Emmanuel. I I don't necessarily think of God with us as much as I think of us with God. Not that we come to him, but that in baptism he has joined himself to us. He has joined us to himself in Christ. Baptism. Us with God. God. Where Jesus goes, we go. What Jesus does, we get credit for. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death. The death that we deserve to die? The death that we deserve because of our sin. Because of our rebellion against God. Because of the hate we have for our neighbor. We died that death. We died that death in Christ, in his death. And Christ's resurrection, not only does that give us the the hope and and promise of, of resurrection on the last day, it gives us the promise of new life today. We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. We have new life in Christ. We are no longer separated from the Father. 
One of the the great things about Mark's account of Jesus' baptism is the the language that he uses and the, the imagery that it creates. Look at verse 10. It says, And when he came up out of the water, immediately he saw the heavens opening and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. Now, in this translation, it just says that the heavens were opening. But a better translation would be that Jesus saw the heavens. The heavens were being torn apart, that they were being torn open. I like that so much better. First of all, it it, it is a much cooler image, not just like these serene clouds parting and the heavens open. No, but the heavens being torn open. But more importantly... I I like this translation, this imagery better because it points toward the other time that something is being torn in Mark's gospel. Toward the end of chapter 15, Jesus is hanging on the cross. In verse 37, Jesus breathes his last. And then in verse 38, we read, and the curtain of the temple was torn. Same word used there in the Greek that is used back during Jesus' baptism of, of the heavens being torn open. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. This curtain was meant to separate the people from the holiest of holies, where God's presence dwelt. And now that that the curtain has been torn, it has been ripped in two, there is no longer separation between God and man. God with us. Us with God. Because Jesus entered those waters. And in our baptism, we meet him there. We are joined to him. And by his grace, he gives us the righteousness that he achieved for us on the cross. Water and spirit. New and eternal life in him. Amen. And now may the peace which passes all understanding keep your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen.